Hello there, and welcome to the Spectrum how-to video for 1.5.x. I say point .x because this walkthrough should be good for both the .118 and .119 versions. It doesn't look like there's any difference besides version release number. I decided I'm going to need to release this into smaller pieces, probably 15-20 minutes a piece, because this mod has gotten very, very large, and I don't want to have to put out a 45 minute to an hour long video to go over the thing very thoroughly. But with that, let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to pick up two new types of geodes, citrine and topaz. And those can be found randomly generated through the world, just like amethyst. We're just going to pull them in my inventory. The next thing you're going to need to do is make a pigment pencil, which is two of the any shards, polished calcite, polished basalt, two planks of any kind, a piece of redstone dust, and some dye. I always do the amethyst one. Oh, not that one. Most of the achievements on this uh, don't unlock until you put it down. And you can see everything that it gets unlocked from here. Now, one of the nice features they do with the mod is if you hold down sneak and right click, it takes you right to the recipe that you need. Then you can see the book shows you the different pedestals for the different variants, different colors. The next part of this involves item crushing where you drop an anvil on things. So we're going to take these, throw them down, and throw an anvil. And now you have crushed amethyst powder. Now there's variants for all of these. You can crush a number of things, not just gemstones, but opals, weeds. There's a few things you can only get through this crushing mechanic, so this is a good thing to know. One of the additional things they did with this update that I really appreciate, thank you so much developers, is in the progression hints now, it now tells you what you have to pay for them. I unlocked them already where to find these three geodes. Now, previously, you just it was just luck. I searched a dozen different geodes before I found a citrine, but now they tell you very specifically where they are and how to find them, which is fantastic. I think that was a great addition, and I'm really happy they did that. The next thing on the list is a paintbrush, which is three string, again, the polished basalt and calcite, which I have right here. Now, this doesn't seem immediately useful, and it won't be for a little bit, but it's got some pretty cool uses later on. Now, back to the pigment pedestal. You'll notice here, there's slots, and these slots are for the powder. You'll need all this powder for almost every single recipe you'll put in here. Now, this 3 by 3 crafting grid works the exact same way as a regular crafting grid. So you can throw anything in here, including vanilla recipes, and it will work. This little slot is for uh, something that will save patterns. So it will save it for you and just put the materials in and put it in and pull it out. It's, it's pretty, pretty handy if you get to that point. So we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to fill all this up because we're going to need it eventually, like so. Now back inside the book, again, some things that they've done I really appreciate. Uh, the resources list now lists every type of resource and not just a brief overview, which is fantastic. The decoration blocks, you get into gemstone glass. They're mostly just different colors. Now, the polished stuff you will need later on for shrines, which we'll get into. And then different block variants and how to get them. So this is a lot more thorough and fleshed out than it used to be. And again, I really appreciate that a lot. So here's what we're talking about with the crafting tablet, which it just saves crafting recipes and the glow vision goggles, which we'll go, go get here in a minute because this is necessary for progression as it is. Now, the last thing is, this is an area I kind of skipped over the first time, but this has got some really cool things in it. The compacting chest, for example, I used a lot in All of Fabric 5. You can throw bars of iron in it, bars and bars of ingots, and it will compact it down automatically into... So if you've got, say, a gold farm and you're producing a crazy amount of gold nuggets, it takes forever to craft gold nuggets into gold blocks. You just throw the nuggets in here, it'll do it for you automatically. You just throw a couple hoppers in it, drop it in, and it'll just compress everything down. It's fantastic. I love this recipe. I This is one of those where it's too game breaking to be in vanilla, but I wish it was. Now, the thing about this table is it requires a source of power in order to use. You can put a button on it and press it. You can put a wrist or torch on it. Uh, you can also right click with a paintbrush. And you have to use it once on one of the recipes in order to unlock the next set of recipes. Now, if we go back into the book, you can see now there's a new pedestal upgrade. 
So we can upgrade the pedestal from this current one to a CMY variant, which will do everything. And it's and this is not difficult to do. You just need each one of these. The thing you need to bear in mind is you need to have these in this order. It has to be like this or it does not work. I'm going to drop one here, one here, and one here. Thankfully, this color order is the same color order as down here and give it a whack. Unfortunately, for the sake of the mod and the progression, even in creative, I can't just pull this out of out and drop it in and have the progression, the progression and the advancement work. You actually have to do the upgrades, which is kind of weird, but it is what it is. Well, now we're at the part of this where we need to start having shrines in order for us to progress, which is why I've cleared out this huge area. It's because some of these get kind of large. Now, thankfully, you can upgrade a couple of the shrines in place and just add things to it as the next upgrade comes up. So in the book, you go to the page where you can where it shows you how to make this and click the next one over and you can see what the shrine is supposed to look like. Now, this is cool and I like this a lot. If You click this. It puts it in a hologram form above you. So we're just going to walk over here. And we're going to come over. And we're just going to right click a place to anchor it. And we're going to put it right there. Now you see at the top you have a bar kind of looks like a boss bar. And as you fill in the proper blocks and proper places, the bar goes up. Now the reason why it's flashing back and forth is because you can put either of the polished basalt or calcite in these places and it will count both. But it kind of tells you what it is. If you have, oh, there it is right there. If you get too close to it, it goes away. But if you get far enough away, it tells you what the block is. And that's new for me. So that's fantastic. I like that. Unfortunately, you can't pick block it. So we're going to go ahead and just build this. If there, again, you don't have to use this solid all of one color. You could mix and match and however you want to do this with the polished basalt, but it has to be the polished variants. Now we're at the part of this mod where ore starts showing up in the world. Once you've built this, you'll start seeing shimmerstone ore. When I went looking last, I found it about Y49. So we're going to go over to this area. And we're just going to start. And we're just and we're just going to start clearing land out. Wow. There it is. Shimmerstone. That's what it looks like. We are at Y47. Now that we have Shimmerstone ore, we can actually start making life. The very first recipe you get is a little bit dangerous, but we're going to do it anyway for the sure example of showing you how dangerous it is. It's called fading and it takes fermented spider eyes lace powders two shrimps or ore and a honey bottle now the fading isn't as dangerous as some of the other ones the fading goes on trees and it will convert the leaves around it because it eats organic material and converts it if you give this just a minute it will consume and start that right there now we've done that it's time to visit a swamp. There are special plants that grow only on clay in swamps. And you have to be able to have got to this point for you to be able to see them. That's the thing with Spectrum. As you progress through the mod, certain things that look normal to you aren't actually normal. If you look at them very distantly or very carefully, or if you have something like, uh, what the heck is that mod uh, that you hover over it, you'll get some jumbled letters. It looks a bit like this. You'll just get the jumbled letters. And you won't know what it is until you get to the point where you can actually unlock it. So if you start seeing stuff laying around or trees, uh, don't chop those trees down. Avoid them because you're going to want them when you get to that point in the progression. So now we go find a swamp. I could have pulled these directly out of creative, but I wanted to show you what these actually look like. Now, I don't know what these look like before you unlock them. I didn't bother to come check. I probably should have, but they only grow on clay. You know how I said there are plenty of things you had to smash? This is where we get to smash. And now we have Quixotic Power, which we'll need more of later. Now that the fading is growing, I'm going to use this. Pick it up. And we get... Vegetal, which is used in a lot of other recipes. This is a necessary step to not only make the fading, but wait for it to take over and then mine it out. Now the reason why this stuff is necessary is because it's necessary in order to create colored trees. That's right, colored trees. 
You know how I said earlier there's sometimes squiggly trees? You don't know what they are? Well, you can't see them, but now you're going to make one in order to be able to see them in the world. And that takes some red dye, some vegicil, sapling of any kind. I usually use oak. Dye goes on the bottom, vegetal on either side, sapling in the center, dye on the top. And then we go whack. Now, if we look around the world briefly, we'll start to see colored trees everywhere. Get some bone mill. We're going to bone mill this. Now, if we take a hoe, and we go into survival. There it is, right there. Pigment. Now that we have pigment, we can do all kinds of things. And this is the other thing the paintbrush is for. You can dip it in paint and then spread and throw paint at things, including sheep, and change their color. So now colored trees are going to spawn all around the world. There's a few exceptions. Brown, light gray, black are a few that don't spawn. You do have to make them with dye, just like we did with the red tree. So we're going to quickly pull these. All right, there it is. Now we've gotten everything that we need to get because we get an achievement called Brown is Weird. The next step in this journey is to make a fusion shrine, which again is just polished basalts and then the different variations of polished blocks. We have the shrine, go to the book, click visualize, and we're going to plop it right here. And just like before, it gives us a nice holographic outline. And it tells us what it is. Also in the book, it tells you what blocks you need. So it's very informative as far as that goes. So let's build. There we go. Create Onyx Shards. Now, this is where it starts to change things, day and night cycle. So we're going to turn game rule to daylight cycle rule. Because there's a mechanic with this where you can make it nighttime or make it daytime. And once you execute this the first time, it starts to rain a lot frequently. So we're going to start by at least initiating the initial recipe. So we're going to take this, and this, and this. And it took the entire stack because you can use it repeatedly. Now this particular recipe requires a very, very specific time of night. Because in order for it to work, there needs to be, as the book says, uh, the blackest of blacks. So midnight on a new moon. So it's noon. And I probably should have left the time clock running. So we're just going to speed up time a little bit. There we go. The rain will always start. And you can't turn it off. I mean, you can turn it off. But it's always going to rain a lot more frequently now that you've done this. And now we have black opal or onyx shards, which now that we have them, these can also be smashed. Into onyx powder. Now it's time to upgrade this temple again. We're going to go to our book. Here's the new temple. Visualize. I find it helpful to smash out that one and click it where you did before. Because you never actually need that block. I just put it there. Now we can see how much larger this is. So we're going to go ahead and finish this upgrade. And now that temple is all completed. Oh, that's a nice update. I didn't know. I don't know if this was here before. But now if you just go into here and you click this little eye icon, then it shows you the upgrade that needs to be done. Now that we have that completed, it's just a matter of finishing the upgrade to the pedestal. And all we have to do is put the onyx shard inside the pedestal with this the powder and, uh, you know, right click with the brush.
Now we can make an ink pedestal that we can change the color of the brush. All I did was right click the pedestal with the book and I got a whole bunch of new recipes and an advancement. Was not expecting that. But in that advancement list, I now have the ability to make a brown tree sapling. The brown tree sapling is the same type of setup like this, but it also requires the onyx powder to be created. And there's the brown sapling. And we'll just go over here and plant it like this. And we'll just pull it right out. So now that we've done that, there's a next thing that you can do with a spyglass. If you look on a dark night with a spyglass, you can find shooting stars. And when they land, they sit on the ground for about five minutes. And then you can pick them up. Now, according to the developer, you have a higher chance of basically forcing a spawn if you're looking around with a shooting star, with a spyglass for shooting stars. Otherwise, you have to kind of wait for them to appear in the skyline. But in the interest of time, the shooting stars drop to the ground looking something like this. We'll just pick one up. They're kind of cool. And there's four or five different colors. And they despawn after a couple of minutes, but they just drop you shards. So nothing spectacular as far as that goes. But these are important. These you can also pick up from shooting stars, and it is just a star fragment. And you need this in order to make a specific wand called a nature staff and a radiance pin. And this is where we're going to end part one of this video. I have a huge chunk of this already recorded, so I'm going to split it up. I'm sorry some of this is a bit jarring. It has taken me a lot longer than I'd like to have it done. But if you've enjoyed this has been helpful to you, please click like, subscribe, leave a comment, an emoji, something. If I screwed something up, tell me and I will give credit or I'll come back and fix it. But I really appreciate it and support you in these videos because they do take a very, very long time to go through and produce. And I will see you again with part two very soon.